What's up, RBY Pokemon Challenges fam? We've made it to 3,000 subscribers. I want to say thank you so much for this huge blow up over the past couple weeks. We've added 800 subscribers in literally a week, guys. For me, this is absolutely insane. And whenever the channel kind of blows up like this, it starts getting me thinking about Pokemon that blow up. And in fact, in Pokemon, we can blow up with moves like self-destruct and explosion. And yet, you almost never see these moves, because in Nuzlocke, it's just throwing one of your Pokemon away, and in a solo challenge, self-destruct is an automatic loss. But these are also some of the strongest moves in the entire game, with the strongest base powers, and they also have a secondary effect. Cutting the opponent's defense in half. That means that, effectively, self-destruct and explosion are the two strongest moves in the entire game, making Hyper Beam look like tackle. But unfortunately, there's no way to do a full game challenge using only self-destruct. Number one, they can't hit ghosts, and number two, at the end of the game against the final champion, he has six Pokemon. And even if you knocked all of them out, you will at least end in a tie knocking your opponent out as you faint, and the world of Pokemon is kind of unfair. We're the only trainer who loses a tie every single time. And yet, if we do a challenge with moves other than self-destruct, we would likely end up never using it. But wait, I've got a solution. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Time Bomb Challenge. It goes like this. We are going to set each of our Pokemon to have only one PP in every move. That's right, we're giving all of our Pokemon the littlest PP that there has ever been in the game of Pokemon. What that means is that even if they have four moves, they'll only be able to use each move once, so it's a three, two, one, and then they self-destruct. To add a little bit more challenge, we're going to prohibit switching out in battle, and of course, we're going to run this on zero DVs, the worst possible version of our Pokemon. Finally, we're going to give ourselves a set of six Pokemon at the beginning of the game, starting at level five, and we're going to make sure that they're all traded Pokemon, meaning that if we ever level up too much, they're going to become disobedient. And finally, we're going to implement a level cap. We can never outlevel the ace of the next gym leader or the next rival. So let's meet our team, starting out with Electrode. Yeah, you heard me right, we're starting the game with an Electrode because Electrode is actually legally available in Gen 1 at level 5. You see, since the rules require that all of our Pokémon are traded, that means that we can use an in-game trade. And this trainer right here, in Pokémon Red and Blue, is trying to trade his Electrode for a Raichu. Well, you can just catch a level 3 Pikachu in Viridian Forest if you want to, evolve it with a Thunderstone, and boom! You've got your first member, Electrode. And now we can take advantage of Generation 2 in order to get access to a bunch of Pokemon at level 5 via breeding that would be able to learn self-destruct. Execute, Coughing, Geodude, Ghastly, and Shelter. So we've got our six Pokemon, we're gonna run the entire game, they've all been taught self-destruct, let's get into it. Now, in my first attempt at this run, I ran these Pokemon with their normal level 5 moves in Pokemon Yellow, just adding self-destruct and limiting them to 1 PP. And let me tell you, it was absolutely terrible. The first major challenge in this run is gaining XP. Because when you self-destruct and knock out an opponent, you get no experience for that fight. And when you're using moves like Tackle or Barrage to try to whittle your opponents down, you often end up self-destructing because you run out of PP, and then you get no XP for most of the run. So the best strategy turned out to just be strategically blowing up on Brock's Geodude, hoping to get it down to 1 HP so that then we could then put in another Pokemon and hopefully knock it out. Fortunately, we did have Geodude and Ghastly on the team in order to help us out here, but this is just a really terrible grind. And the Misty section is equally terrible. When we finally do get to the Starmie, we're using our Execute to just blow up on her. Then we had to switch into our Voltorb. Yes, in the first run, I used Voltorb instead of Electrode. 
and I've decided to go for Thunder Wave in order to paralyze it. That means that we can send our Geodude out and use Self Destruct immediately to just do some damage. Now we have two more Pokemon left. Coughing can just try to use its moves up and then Self Destruct. And finally, it's time for Ghastly. And in a Gen 1 Ghastly, it actually has Nightshade, which means it can just knock this Pokemon out two hours to beat Misty. We're averaging an hour per gym. And at nearly four hours into the run, in the Rocket Game Corner, just as I was getting ready to fight Jesse and James, OBS decided to tap out on this one. I actually played all the way through the Koga section when I realized that my footage has stopped recording. So time for round two. This time, the first thing that I changed was changing Voltorb into Electrode. Electrode gets access to Sonic Boom, which means it has a move that can do guaranteed 20 damage to every opponent. That makes leveling up in the early game much easier. And even if we have another Pokemon whittle an opponent down a little bit, if we can get Electrode in there, it can finish the job in many cases. But now it's also time to think about what we could do with traded Pokemon. And since most of our Pokemon are Gen 2 tradebacks, well, we could take advantage of Egg Moves and the Gen 2 Move Tutor. So this time our Geodude gets to start the game, adding Rock Slide as an Egg Move and Flamethrower as a Move Tutor move. Our Coughing, which was by far the worst Pokemon on the team, gets upgraded with Psybeam as an Egg Move and Thunderbolt and Flamethrower from the Move Tutor. Then we can add Ghastly, which loses Confuse Ray and Nightshade, but gains access to Hypnosis at the start of the game. It can also learn Thunderbolt from the Move Tutor and Psywave as a Gen 2 Egg move. Finally, Shelter gets access to Bubble Beam and Ice Beam, giving it two very strong moves to use throughout the game. And you would think that this would make this run so much easier. I mean, we can now level up reliably in the early game, and it's time to just see if we can beat Brock on the first attempt. So, you know, 45 minutes, even with these overpowered moves, it took 45 minutes to get to this point. Um, granted, some of that's explanation time and whatnot, but still. Okay, now here, Ice Beam is not enough to one shot. So we'll self-destruct. He survives. That's fine. We are going to put out Execute, since Execute can just use Mega Drain here and guarantee a win. So there we go, and Execute grows to level 11, so now Execute joins the list of Pokémon that are disobedient. Oh, disobedience, guys, you don't even know the shenanigans that we're about to get into here. We do not have the ability to make our Pokémon obedient again until we manage to beat Misty. And uh, now we have to take on some trainers. Starting with this bug catcher, he's got three Pokemon. I think that Geodude is the best play because as long as we are able to use our moves, Rock Slide should just wreck one of them. Oh, he used Tackle instead. No. Okay, Flamethrower does wreck that one though. Grows to level 12. Here, Self Destruct is probably our only choice. Oh, he used Tackle instead of Self Destruct. No! And Tackle missed. Which means we have to use Struggle here. Oh, and we have no choice but to use Struggle. Oh god. That is shenanigans. This, this is a bomb that didn't go off, guys. No! <laughs> There, there is that factor too. We could be trying to use self-destruct and have it just turn out to not use self-destruct. <laughs> oh god, this game's so broken. Disobedience completely broken, guys. But it actually is helpful here because <laughs> we might just not self-destruct. We might use a different move. Could actually be used to avoid level ups by just letting our Pokemon blow up instead of uh, beating the opponent. Now we need to think strategy. I am going to try to send out Coughing first against this uh, super nerd on the basis that I think it will do just fine against his um, Grimer. 
But let's see if we can actually land a Psybeam here. Oh, he just self-destructs. No. <laughs> okay, Shelder is still obedient. So, Bubble Beam? Yes. Okay, so Bubble Beam does get us through. But now we level up. And now we're disobedient. No. He uses Withdraw instead of Ice Beam. And now self-destruct. Okay. Um... We need a good Pokemon for this last coughing. So here, I'm going to use Hypnosis. That failed. But Smog fortunately does basically nothing. Psywave misses. Thunderbolts. We paralyzed it. Self-destruct? Oh, he survives. Okay. So now Doris, get out there. And let's Sonic... I wanted to use Sonic Boom on this one. And see, Tackle just didn't do enough, so now we have to self-destruct. <laughs> oh god. So we beat the Super Nerd, but two of his Pokémon we didn't get any XP on. Because we had to just self-destruct against them. Like, running away is based on speed in this version. Okay, we get away with one HP remaining. Or <laughs> execute everything else that's fainted. Oh god. And, but we need to heal so that we can, uh, hopefully do fine against Jesse and James with their Ekans, their Meowth, and their coughing. So here we go. We're about to fight Jesse and James at the end of this section. And we need to decide what the best Pokemon is to use here. I'm going to try Geodude first because it has the most strong moves. But let's see if we can actually get what we need here. So, if it just self-destructs, we're just, you know, there's nothing we can do about that. Um, Flamethrower only did that much. Which is, I mean, kind of expected. We're not a special attacker. Okay, so we get through the first Pokemon. That's fine. We Mega Punch. That was fine, too. Now we have no choice but to self-destruct. Just take Meowth down. Also, I think fine. Now we're going to get into a coughing fight. That's that's my game plan. I'm going to try to use my other moves first on the basis that he could just decide to use Psybeam instead. And Psybeam is super effective. And now we have to self-destruct. And we got knocked out. Okay, that's kind of fine. Let's go for Bubble Beam here. Oh, we self-destructs instead. No, we wanted to get XP. Come on. Oh my god, Shelter, you legend. <laughs> just like, I'm just going to blow up, guys. I feel like blowing up today. You, you want to blow up? Let's blow up. <laughs> oh, man. So we need to beat Misty as soon as possible so that we can get rid of this disobedience that we're dealing with. Um, but this fight's not going to be easy. And this is going to be tough, guys. We're going to just have to figure out what we can do, if anything, here. Sorry, I always take that gym leader section as a time to drink something. <laughs> as a time to drink. Pokemon with shots, guys. Come on. Uh, no. <laughs> so here we are going to go for Sonic Boom on the Staryu first. Goes Tackle there. Perfect. We mostly get to knock that one out. I'm going to send out... Coughing. We're going to try to Thunderbolt. And instead he self-destructs. Thanks, Coughing. Um, now... Let's try to send out Ghastly here first. We're trying for Hypnosis. Use Psy Wave instead. And Bubble Beam Rex. Okay, Shelder. We can try Ice Beam here. There's a small chance to freeze. Now she's used so many Hardens, though, that I don't think we get through this. We're going to try Mega Drain. He uses Barrage instead. Are you kidding me? And self-destruct, which means we're dead. Oh, we lose the first attempt against Misty. 
whatever we do, Geodude's just a one-hit KO. But if she was frozen, well, then Geodude can get in there and it can do whatever and it can possibly win that fight. Okay, Sonic Boom to start. Here, we'll just self-destruct. Okay. Again, that's fine. Psywave does knock that one out. Perfect. We use Thunderbolt there. That's kind of fine, but... Okay. Like, why won't it just use Mega Drain instead or something? Like, that would be a perfectly fine result. Oh, here. Uh, it's frozen. Yes! Oh, we have a chance, guys. Okay, coughing comes out. Thunderbolts uses flamethrower instead. And then he unthaws the starry, the starmy. Oh, but we use self-destruct. Yes, we finally get through Misty. Okay, I don't even care that we didn't get XP from the starmy because now our Pokemon are obedience. Oh, that's that's just great. <laughs> <laughs> Our Pokemon are obedient until level 30 now. Um, the level cap for Lieutenant Surge is level 28. Um, so we should be fine. Oh, man. This next rival. Okay, so in order to take out the first Pokemon, the Spearow, I'm going to lead off with Geodude. I think Rock Slide can destroy the Spearow. Um... And we have obedience, so we don't need to worry about that nonsense. Yes, that is an easy one-hit KO there. Let's go for the flamethrower here. It misses. Mega Punch also misses. Now we just have to blow up. And self-destruct also misses. But that's okay. Shelter time. And here I think we go for the ice beam here. Okay, it doesn't quite do the job. But we do knock it out with the... Uh, the bubble beam the next turn we get knocked out there now ghastly might be the one for ratata because ratata can't actually damage ghastly now thunderbolts uh, yes we take it down now against dv we have no pp so we just have to self-destruct it survives that's fine Let's send doris out doris sonic boom that one there we go yes we get through rival number two with no problems with this team. So, the long and short of it is that we've seen Disobedience is terrible. We've seen that it is possible to still win fights with this moveset. We've also seen that winning fights with this moveset is not good. <laughs> it's really bad. With Rival 2 going down, I started to do a little bit of grinding to level up because I think my team's gonna need more levels in order to get through the game. And fortunately, Ghastly is able to evolve into Haunter here, giving us a much more powerful Pokemon. Now on the SSN, I'm going to fight one optional trainer. I didn't fight anything else here, just this gentleman so that I can get access to the rare candy that he blocks. I'm saving all the rare candies until I get to the Elite Four. I'm not going to use them before that because really, we're going to need tons of levels in this one. I don't think there's any chance that we beat the league at anything less than maybe level 50. And two of our Pokemon are in the slow level up group. But with that being done, let's get to the rival three fight. We definitely can knock out the first two Pokemon, I think, as long as we don't get misses. Rock Slide easily one shots there. And now Dig should just do the job here. It does. Now on Sandshrew, I'm going to go for Flamethrower first. Now I'm just going to self destruct. And it gets knocked out. Nice. So now. I think we just send out Haunter. Okay, Thunderbolts. Oh, critical hit. Thunderbolt just one-shots his Eevee. So, uh, yeah. So overall, we're making really good progress up to this point. And the fact that we've used Gen 2 tradeback Pokemon and given them egg moves and relevant move tutor moves is really helping us to actually level up our Pokemon. Geodude's already at level 21 and knows Dig, which should do just fine against Lieutenant Surge here. But after we beat Lieutenant Surge, we're not going to waste a lot of time leveling up. We're going to try to get to Celadon City as quickly as possible, because Celadon is where we can actually start getting access to TMs, and that might make some of these Pokemon even better, particularly Execute. Execute hasn't really had any good moves up to this point, but if we add in the move Psychic, 
I think it will actually become pretty strong. We can also immediately evolve Shelter and Execute once we get to Celadon City, so we're just going to rush there as quick as possible. But first, let's just take down Lieutenant Surge. We're already at level 21, we can just dig. And it's not quite a one-hitter, but Rock Slide does the job. There we go. So we get through Lieutenant Surge, we level up to level 22. And with Lieutenant Surge going down, we can now get access to Thunderbolt. We're gonna throw that onto Doris, making our Electrode much, much stronger. And this next section really isn't hard. We can basically win every battle either by self-destruct or by knocking opponents out because we've got strong enough moves and our Pokemon are getting to high enough levels that we can actually do some decent damage here. So the real next challenge is just the Rock Tunnel Hiker, but self-destruct doesn't work well on rock types. So let's see how this one goes. So first things first, we're going to try to put this first Geodude to sleep. I'm going to use Psy Wave. Um, he can self-destruct, he didn't. But I think this is a good spot to put Execute out because the super effective Mega Drain is enough, yes. So here we can try to put this one to sleep, it didn't work. Now we're just self-destructing, so that's fine. Shelter can go out. Bubble Beam does the job there, nice. Here we can Ice Beam on this one. We got a Gen 1 miss with Ice Beam, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh god. Okay, uh, Doris can use Sonic Boom, which will do decent damage if it had hit. So now we just self-destruct. Um, now I think we just go Geodude, because we can survive his self-destruct. There we go. Okay, so now we have made it all the way to sell it on. So in comparison to the first run, we're doing amazingly. It's only been two hours and we've made it all the way to Celadon City where we can actually get decent moves and we can evolve two of our Pokemon. We can evolve our Execute by getting a Leaf Stone and we can evolve Shelter by getting a Water Stone. That being said, I usually beat the entire game in less than two hours. So in that sense, this run is absolutely terrible. Add to that that we now have a Graveler and Haunter that are level 25. We're getting pretty close to the cap for our obedience if we don't go ahead and beat Erica pretty soon. And let's go ahead and uh, get the Psychic TM. I think that's just super duper important in this one, especially for our for Executor. So we're going to learn that right now over Barrage. Barrage, garbage. We're going Psychic. There we go. TM42. We can teach it to Haunter. We're going to teach this over Psy Wave. It now has a way to heal in battle even. Not that that's super important, but Dream Eater is 100 base power. Which means it is a move that, in theory at least, could one-shot some opponents as long as we get Haunter to a high enough level. So we need to fight the rival first. I'm going to lead off with Doris here against his Fero because we can Thunderbolt it. Oh, he gets a critical hit there. Will Sonic Boom? Thunder Wave. Okay, and we just didn't do enough damage. So, uh, there goes that one. Now, I'm trying to remember what his next Pokemon is. Because... Is it Shelter? I think it is. Yeah. So we get a nice Psychic there. Gonna just do a nice Mega Drain right there. Actually wasn't enough, so we still had to self-destruct there. But that means next should be Vulpix. Yes, very nice. We can just go for a dig right here. Oh, I should have been thinking. I should have saved dig for the Sandshrew. Oh, but we still knock it out. <laughs> oh, we get sand attacked. No, we miss Eevee. Eevee, you jerk. Okay, so we're going to try to put Eevee to sleep. Yes. And now we're going to Dream Eater it. That worked. And now Thunderbolt, I think, does the job. It does. So there we go. We get through. 
that arrival, no problem. Now before moving on, I decided to grind a little bit against the ghost trainers in the Lavender Tower, and with just a little bit of training, Exeggutor can now one-shot these Ghastlies. I think that's really important for the late game, and it also means that Exeggutor is going to be useful against Erika. If we can knock out one of her Pokémon with this one, and then self-destruct, we might just be able to get through that fight without having to go over level 30. But of course, Exeggutor only has one PP, so it has to self-destruct on this second Ghastly for the Agatha Jr. Trainer, and that could be a problem in the late game. Now, I was debating allowing myself to use PP-ups to give one more PP in any given move. I decided against it for a few reasons, but one, because it would kind of defeat the whole purpose of the run, but two, because who needs PP? I'm going to try Erika, but here's my game plan. We're gonna go Haunter first, because we can put the first Tangela to sleep, and uh, then I think it's just about sleep strats. Okay, so... Oh, we miss Hypnosis, come on. I think that's just an auto-reset there when we miss Hypnosis turn one. 60% accurate, we'll miss 4 out of 10 times. Hit 6 out of 10, so we, we're still heavily off favored to, to hit. Okay, it's asleep. Dream Eater. Did a decent amount of damage there. I'll use a Thunderbolt to just take it down a little lower. And Self-Destruct will do the job. Cool. Next up, Exeggutor. Let's go for Psychic here. Okay, we did one shot there. Now, let's... Hypnosis here, if we can. Oh, we get knocked out. Okay. Um, Cloyster. Ice beam time. Oh, and look at the critical hit one shot. <laughs> okay, so Erica goes down, and that means that we now have obedience locked in. Erica's badge guarantees obedience up to level 50, and since Sabrina's Pokemon are at level 50 and we're not allowed to out level them, we will actually be obedient for the rest of this run. And outside of the time that it's taken to get here, you could easily argue that this run up to this point has actually been pretty easy. But we've seen a lot of times in my solo challenges that this is really the pre-game. Basically, once we get through the rocket timeline and we have to take on Kogo or we have to take on Rival 5, that's when the real challenge starts to kick in. So how will this team perform as we get to the later gyms? Well, first, we gotta take down Jesse and James. Here, let's just save the game. Let's fight Jesse and James. Leading off with Haunter, I think is the play to go. Okay, we put Coughing to sleep, perfect. So we can just one shot there. We can Thunderbolt here on the Meowth, that's an easy one hitter. And we'll just self-destruct here on the Ekans, easy one hitter, there we go. So we take Jesse and James down very, very easily. Now it's time for Cloyster to do its thing. And uh, I think we can knock out the first two Pokemon and then self-destruct on the uh, Persian. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so uh, here I'm going to Ice Beam here. That's an easy one-hit KO. Bubble Beam, easy one-hitter there. And now we can just self-destruct here. And we take down the Persian. Perfect. So that was just easy, easy. Okay, so here we are, Ghosty Mama. Here, let's go for the Mega Drain first. Did decent damage. And now Psychic finishes the job. Nice. Okay, so now it's time to take on Jesse and James. I think Cloyster is a good candidate to lead off. Like, I think it will do just fine against Meowth. And then we can save Exeggutor and Haunter for the poison types. So yeah. Oh, easy one shot. Nice. Bubble Beam is not going to be enough to knock it out, but that's fine. We just want to blow up. Here we go. Let's send Exeggutor out. Exeggutor is weak against its poison type moves, but Psychic should do, yeah, <laughs> that. Easy one hit KO. So there we go. Uh, we got through that section just fine. So with Team Rocket dealt with, we can make our way down to Fuchsia City, but before we fight Koga, there's one special item we need to get. And Professor Oak's aid. Yes, 
Give me that XP all. There we go. So this actually makes grinding quite a bit easier because now, even when one of our Pokemon faints in battle from self-destructing, the other Pokemon will still have a chance to gain XP from it. And uh, that's just huge. So with the XP all in hand, it's time to get to the first real challenge, Koga. Okay, we get it to sleep. Here, I'm just gonna go Psychic. Not quite a one-hitter, but here, Mega Drain does the job there, nice. Now the next Pokemon doesn't have any really strong moves against us, because its moves are all Psychic type. So we can just do that. I'm gonna send Doris out. Thunderbolt, there we go. Yes, Doris, you got it. Sonic Boom here. I don't think that I want to, um, to paralyze this one, but here we get put to sleep, which is just bad luck. Um, okay, we've got Cloyster out now, Ice Beam. Like he's gonna go Sleep Powder every turn on a Cloyster because it's a uh, water type Pokemon. That's why I went for Ice Beam. I could have a chance at least to um, put this one to sleep. Or to freeze that one, rather. Okay, so we're on to Venomoth. It's going to use Leech Life or Psychic, I believe. Go Psychic. That is G to the G there. Okay, Psychic here. Also, one shots. Okay, so we lost that fight. We clearly do have to level up more for that. Okay. So, what else can we do? Well, let's go back up. Let's go to Silphco first. Okay, so here we go. Time for this Rival 5 attempt, at least. Um, I'm going to lead off with Cloyster to try to take down his uh, very first Pokemon, the Sans Sandslash. Let's see if we're doing enough damage. We're outsped, and he sand attacks, but... Oh, that is a one-hit KO. Nice. Okay. That is pretty significant because... It means that, in theory, we can blow up there. Oh, we take down the, uh... The Ninetales, yes. Okay. So I believe next is Cloyster. So let's go Thunderbolt here. Not quite enough to one-shot, but now we'll just self-destruct. It's not quite enough. Here, I'm just going to Mega Drain to take that one down. Next up is the, the Kadabra, but we resist its moves, so we can just self-destruct and take it down. Yes. And finally... Jolteon, but Jolteon doesn't have anything good against Graveler. Oh, wait, does it double kick? Oh, it knows double kick. Rip. Oh, but it doesn't get a crit. We dig. Oh, there's the one hitter. Yes, we take down Rival 5. That was not even hard. Oh, my God. We were able to get it without just massively leveling up, guys. That is pretty dope. That is pretty awesome, if you ask me. Um, which means I think we can just clear out Sylph, or just finish Sylph. Rather, I don't think we need to fight everything in there. I think that's just a massive waste of time. We can, I think, pretty easily beat Jesse and James and beat Giovanni, so that's what I'm going for. There we go. Giovanni time. Oh wait, just a second. Rip. I haven't organized my team well. The first Pokemon we actually want to send out is going to be Haunter because it can't really take any main meaningful damage from the first two Pokemon. Oh, we missed the Hypnosis though, are you kidding me? Sorry, I just think that's a reset. We need to land Hypnosis and have this first uh, Nidorino stay asleep. 
Okay. Oh, come on. Come on. Game, game, game. 60% accuracy. Means we should hit, like, you know. <laughs> we shouldn't be missing three in a row. Come on. And we're so close to level up with our Haunter, too. There it goes. Now it's asleep. Dream Eater. He's... Oh, not a one-shot. Oh, I thought it would be a one-hitter. It did not one-hit. That's bad, guys. That was not what we were looking for. Which means that we just have to self-destruct here. We get a growl. It's not great. Here, I'm going to send out Graveler. We miss Rock Slide. And go for Flamethrower. Doesn't do anything. So now we have to go dig. Okay, so Graveler does level up. Now we just have to self-destruct on this Rhyhorn here. I'm going to send out Cloyster. Cloyster, Ice Beam it. There we go. Okay. Coughing leveled up there. Nice. We can do that. Now it's going to use Double Kick because it's super effective. I think, yeah, we just knock it out with our self-destruct. So we have taken down Giovanni. And uh, Silphco finished. Just like that. But uh, here we can learn Earthquake with Graveler. And the value of this move is really in the fact that we can just get more PP. Flamethrower, we've had it on the, the set all this time. I don't think it's actually necessary. I think we want to go Rock Slide, Dig, Earthquake. And that way, like in a normal run, Earthquake and Dig are completely redundant, right? There would be no reason to have them both. But here, it's about having another PP rather in a same type attacking move that can actually deal good damage to our opponents. There are going to be some weird spots like that where I'm going to have movesets that you would just never have in a normal solo run because they wouldn't make any sense. Like, why would you have Dig and Earthquake, especially if you had Flamethrower for coverage? It just wouldn't make any sense in a solo run, but in a team challenge and with these rules, yeah, we're going for it. So here we go. We are getting into the Sabrina fight. So here I am going to try to put this one to sleep. I'm going to try to Thunderbolt it. We missed everything. Oh God. That may be all she wrote for this one. Here we'll go for Dig. Missed Earthquake. Nearly knocks it out. Oh God. No. Okay, we were able to knock that one out finally. Psy wave. She X defends, which is not good for us. Doris, get out there. Oh, Psychic just destroys us. Okay, I think we need to reset. I think we need better luck on the first um, Abra. Among all things. Like, we literally couldn't land anything on this Pokemon last time. Self-destruct misses. Come on. You're coughing? This might be coughing spot, honestly. Because at least it can self-destruct and take out Abra. Nice. So we sacrificed it to take down Abra. Now... I say we go... Doris. Let's go for the Thunderbolt. Go for the Thunder Wave. Let's go for the Sonic Boom. We're just trying to get this one in a range where we'll be able to knock it out. And we do. Nice. So next out, I'm going to send out Exeggutor. Because at least we resist Psychic. We have a chance to put this one to sleep. I'm going to Mega Drain it once. I'm going to self-destruct here. Not quite enough to knock it out, but let's see if our Earthquake can do the job. Oh, and it does. We beat Sabrina. All our Pokemon in the 30s. No problem. 
So we can dig out. Um, you know, coughing, it was useful. It blew up on a on a Pokemon. So uh yeah. So the Sabrina fight really wasn't that hard, but I still think we need a few more levels before we go down to take on Koga. So how could we gain them? Well, we have a perfect punching bag right here in Saffron City by taking on the Dojo Master. We get to sleep. Stays asleep. Oh, there's the Dream Eater. Nice. Okay, we leveled up with Haunter as well. Now Thunderbolts. Doesn't take down the Hitmonchan, but that's fine. We'll just knock it out the next turn. And there we go. So we beat the Fighting Dojo. That was easy. We've got a Hitmonlee. Just not not even for any reason. We got the Hitmonlee just for the humiliation of their their dojo. That's what you get for trying to trying to take me on with a Fighting Dojo. Up to this point, Haunter and Graveler are like the MVPs. And uh, coughing is like the the dead weight on the team. You know, if you could cut any Pokemon from this team, it would definitely be coughing. But maybe coughing will have its time to shine still. You know, we, we just don't know. Um, it may have a spot where it all comes down to coughing and coughing delivers the win for all I know. Let's just try Koga again at our current level. Hey, we can just self-destruct to knock out the first Venonat, so very nice. Um, our first Pokemon did at least deal with that one. Here, this one doesn't know um, Sleep Powder, which is very important. Because um, it means that we can do that. Nice. Now, next Venonat, we're going to come out and do self-destruct. Nice. So we knock out the second Venonat. Now I'm going to send out Exeggutor. I'm sending out Exeggutor because it basically guarantees that he's 50-50 he's with Venomoth to go for Toxic or to go for Leech Life. If he goes for Toxic, I think we have a chance to put him to sleep. But even Leech Life doesn't one-shot. Nice. Now we can go for Psychic here. And now we can self-destruct. Oh, we don't quite one-shot it. Okay. Time for the Earthquake. Yes. Oh, we get it. Yes, 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 yes. We take down Koga. That is another gym done. Who needs who needs levels? <laughs> when you can just blow up on everything. Who needs levels? And of course, we've got our Cloister to Surf. So this should be perfectly fine. And Cloyster is about to get Blizzard. So here we're going to learn Blizzard. We're going to learn it over Withdraw. You know, like one badge boost isn't anything to write home about. And it's time to see if we can take on Blaine. I think the best strategy is honestly to lead off with other Pokemon and save Graveler for the very end against the Arcanine. Even then, it might not be enough. So here, we need to lead off in this one. I'm going to lead off with Doris. I'm going to paralyze the first uh, Ninetales. That's my game plan. Um, yeah. So there, we paralyze this one. The flamethrower does wreck here, though. So uh, here, I do think we can send out coughing. Let's do a thunderbolt. Oh, it's doing like no damage with all of its attacks. So there, we only did like half damage there. Psychic flamethrower will wreck us there. He doesn't have smart AI. He's not using that move like intentionally. Like, you know, oh, this is the strongest move. I'll use this move. No, that's not how his AI works. So here we'll just oh, 
faint, apparently. So here we'll Ice Beam that one now. Stomp isn't that bad for us here. Fire Spin again, not terrible for us here. And now, oh, we get taken down though. I think we just lost that one, so I, I just reset, guys. Sorry. And it's finally here at Blaine that it seems like we've hit a complete wall. You see, Blaine's AI is not smart AI in Pokemon Yellow. He just attacks completely randomly. But the reason that he has bad AI in this version is because they buffed his team so incredibly much from Pokemon Red and Blue. He no longer uses Super Potions when he's at full health, and all of these Pokemon have incredibly high critical hit rates and incredibly strong moves that allow them to basically take down any opponent. Even when you've got a Water-type Pokemon here or a Rock-type Pokemon, they're typically not strong enough to just sweep through this team. I think if we had just our Graveler with a normal setup where it had tons of PP and Earthquake and Rock Slide, it could probably get through, but the rest of our team just gets crushed. Even Cloyster, which you would think would be the natural ace here using Surf, is neutrally affected by all of their moves, and in spite of its massive defense stat, it still takes good damage from moves like Takedown and Stomp, meaning that this would probably be impossible at this level even for a solo Cloyster with normal amounts of PP. So one of the reasons that I hear sometimes people say that Pokemon Yellow should be easier than Pokemon Red and Blue is because clearly they took away Smart AI from a lot of the major gym leaders. But the reason that they took away Smart AI is because if they had Smart AI and Blaine and Sabrina and Lieutenant Surge, they would actually be way too hard. This was a kid's game, remember? So they didn't want kids to have to sit here and reset massively like this, trying to get through, or to have to grind levels for hours in order to beat the next gym. Now this fight is really frustrating, but it actually looks like we might eventually be able to get through at our current level, because we have made it to the Arcanine multiple times, and we get through the Ninetales very reliably. The question is what order to put our Pokemon out in, and when should we self-destruct, when should we use our other moves in order to whittle this team down. If we can just get to the Arcanine and have it use really bad moves, go for takedown against Haunter or set up Reflect multiple times, we have a chance to get through this one, but it's just going to come down to a massive number of resets. Speaking of resets, I always include them in the score on the bottom right, but the score that's showing in this one is not really an accurate score. And the reason is because we're using multiple Pokemon, and the way that my TM counter works is it actually checks the change of moves in the first slot Pokemon after each battle. And because I'm often swapping Pokemon in and out of the first slot in my team, it's actually counting all of their move differences as TMs. So kind of ignore that one down there, and of course resets don't really count in this one much either, I think the best measure of just how bad this run is going is the time. Because at this amount of time, most Pokemon would already be at level 100, and yet our team is still sitting in the 30s. But with that said, I do think we'll get through this fight eventually, so let's just see how many attempts it ends up taking. Um, uses Reflect again, that's very nice. We can go Dream Eater here. And now self-destruct on him. Now Graveler, get out there and do your thing, buddy. Fire Blast, one shots. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we get the double Fire Blast. Oh man. Obviously fighting more optional battles would make this quote unquote more consistent, but um, honestly, that, that last one was bad luck because we basically had him self-destruct. Okay, coughing, get out there, thunderbolt him. Let's go Psybeam on him as well. And self-destruct does take that one down. Perfect. 
Once again, time for Cloister on this one. Blizzard missed. That was bad. Oh, but the critical hit. Yes, that's what we needed. The critical hit surf. Okay, so we have made it to the Arcanine. Now let's self-destruct here. Flamethrower does not knock us out, so self-destruct does get to do the job there. Um, time for Haunter. Uh, takedown can't affect Haunter. Very nice. And Fire Blast. I was hoping he wouldn't use that. I was hoping he would reflect or something like that. Uh, Flamethrower. We can survive. And here, let's go for Dig. Oh, and there we go. See, we take Blaine down. All right. So, seven gems down. We didn't do a ton of grinding in that last section. I think this is just fine, guys. We have to take out two trainers in uh, Giovanni's gym before we're able to fight Giovanni himself. And Giovanni himself is probably not going to be great. Like, look at our team. Uh, Doris, Haunter, Graveler, and Coughing are all weak to ground. Which is why this is probably going to be the gym where we actually have to really, like, seriously level up. Okay, we're four and a half hours into this, though. This is really not that bad. Not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Like, you know, I was trying to make it hard on myself, you know, using only one one PP per move, but you know, sometimes you can't control that the game is just easier than you expect. I do think Executor is important in this one because I believe it's going to be able to cheese the Nidos. Like the Nidos are not going to be able to damage it because of his AI. So we need to save Exeggutor for like midway through the fight, basically. Um, so we need other Pokemon to knock out the first two on his team. So I'm going to put Cloyster out first. We're going to have to rely on the fact that we outspeed with something like Haunter on the final ride on. I think that's going to be super important. So here, Surf is a one-shot. Nice. It was a critical hit, but it did take that one down. Now, Persian, I'm going Blizzard here. It does hit even with the double team. That is nice. And we get a nice hit there. And we knock out Persian. Perfect. Okay. So now, it's time to send Exeggutor out, I think. And, uh... Let's just see. First Needle Queen time. Going to go Psychic here. Does about half. Mega Drain does basically nothing. Self Destruct does not knock it out. I'm going to send out uh, Coughing to finish the job there. Please guard spec. Nope, he Earthquakes. Okay, there's nothing that we can do about that. Um, here we have no choice but to just self-destruct here. We're doing way too little damage though. And now Earthquake is 100% accurate, so he's gonna hit it every turn. Um, yeah, so we clearly need more levels. We're way too slow with our whole team. And uh, that is an issue. So unlike Blaine, which was just a wall that required a lot of resets, or Koga, a wall that just required us to fight some other required trainers and then go back and take him out, Giovanni is the first place where we actually have to start power leveling. Because it's clear that we're just not strong enough to get through his team, everything outspeeds, everything does way too much damage, and yeah, there are probably little optimizations I could make in the strategy, particularly with putting Doris out first to self-destruct before I put the Exeggutor in, but still, we're just not doing enough damage, and we need a ton of levels in order to make this one work. So the question is, at what level will it work? Well, in the meantime, I'm just going to take on all the trainers in Giovanni's gym 
and in fact I even made my way over to the power plant to get some free experience from some wild Pokemon there. I decided to take on Zapdos, you know old zappy boy, just for the memes. We usually wave goodbye to him as we leave the power plant after getting our PP up, but in this one we're gonna actually fight him, and it turns out that Rock Slide didn't really do that much. And then we decide to self-destruct with Graveler, and we still don't knock it out. Okay, so I switched Doris in, yes, Thunderbolt should just finish this one, but that shows you just how weak we are. That even when we're using super effective moves, we're just so many levels lower than our opponents that we can't even knock them out with one Pokemon. But I decided at this point that I was getting enough experience by just grinding against the first couple Pokemon on Giovanni's team over and over again because we can get through the Doug Trio and the Persian actually with reasonable consistency. And if we can just get through two or three of his Pokemon, it's actually way more experience than any other trainer could possibly give us. So I'm just going to blackout grind here and see what level I finally get through. Okay, so we knock him out that time with Cloyster. That's good. Here. Okay, so we knock out Persian there. So far, so good. Hunter can actually outspeed Nidoqueen now, meaning we can put it to sleep. And once it's asleep, we can just Dream Eater it and then self-destruct to take that one down. That's actually really good. Now, Doris Strats here, I think, to self-destruct on the Nido King. Um, we're going to send out Graveler just to see. He guard specs. That's very nice. We take that one down. Okay. We're to the right on. He guard specs. We get a critical hit with Dig. So now he knocks this one out. But now we can send out Exeggutor. And he goes for Rock Stride, but Mega Drain, we got through Giovanni just like that. Okay, that's eight gym badges, guys. And I think our highest level Pokemon's level 41. Oh, 44, sorry, 44 for Graveler, but man, oh man, that's not bad. That's really not bad. I'll take that. I'll take that all day. Now we're probably in a very similar situation now against rival number six, but I do think that Cloyster is the lead here. And the reason Cloyster is the lead is because it's going to have a super effective move against his first two Pokemon for sure. Uh, it will have Ice Beam or Blizzard that can be used on the Execute, and of course Surf can be used on the very first um, Whatchamacall, the first Sand Slash. And it's our second highest level Pokemon, so I think this just makes too much sense. So let's just see. Let's see if this will work. So here, I think we go Blizzard here. That is a one hit KO. Nice. Now Execute comes out. I'm going Ice Beam. That is also a one hit KO. Very, very nice. Now nine tails. Oh, I meant to go surf. I went self-destruct by mistake. Oh, no. Okay, we're going to send out Graveler. Um, I'm going to use Earthquake here. Okay. Now we want withdraw from this next Pokemon. We got it, but we missed with Rock Slide. It goes withdraw again. Okay, so now I'm gonna send out Doris to go Thunderbolt and just take that one down. Nice. Here on Kadabra, I'm gonna Thunder Wave it first. We'll go Sonic Boom, missed. So now we self destruct. Um, coughing. Get out there. It's it was sludge, but he knocks us out. Okay. Um, okay, so we knocked that one out. 
We're to the Jolteon. I'm... Okay, pin missile's fine. I self-destruct. Okay, Haunter. Get out there. He's going agility. Oh, but we are out of Pokemon as we self-destruct and we missed with sleep, otherwise we would have won there. Because if we had put him to sleep and been able to use Dream Eater, we would have knocked that final Pokemon out. So a couple mistakes there, honestly. Um, so Ice Beam's fine there. We need to knock it. We need to land Blizzard here. Okay, so that's easy. Two hits, two wins. Now Ninetales Surf this time. Okay, it's not enough to knock it out, but that's okay because now we do knock it out with a self destruct. Okay, so next was uh, Cloister, wasn't it? So we're going to send out Doris. Do your thing. Yeah, that Thunderbolts is what we're all about here. Okay, Thunder Wave. He reflects again here. Self-destruct in order to just knock that one out, hopefully. Again, Sludge here. Gets the critical hit, so we get through there. We're to the Jolteon with this one now. He goes Agility. I'm just going to go Self-destruct there. Uh, he's only going to go Agility on these Poison types, isn't he? So we put this Jolteon to sleep. I use Dream Eater, Thunderbolts, and now Self-Destruct. And there we go, boys. We have beaten Kaboom, the rival. The rival Kaboom has gone down. And we're on to the league. Just like that. We are on to the league. So it's been over five and a half hours before we make it to the league, but even now, it actually turns out that we can't make it through Lorelei at our current level. I've even taught my Electrode Thunder as well as Thunderbolt, so it has two PP, and it's not enough to just take out the first Dugong. Then we're outsped even with Haunter against the Cloister, and our Cloister is still slower, of course, at a lower level. It can't do much damage against an enemy Cloister. The only other Pokemon that we have that has really good super effective moves here, of course, is going to be our Exeggutor, but Exeggutor is really bad against these Ice types, so the only one it can really set up on is the Slowbro. But Slowbro's really bulky, which means we can't really even get through this fight without having to explode. And that leaves us with only Graveler, which is weak to everything on Lorelei's team, so we get completely crushed. So I had to sit here and grind levels over and over and over again. Yet again, I still have 12 rare candies in the bag, but I was thinking if Lorelei is this terrible, then surely the rest of the league, especially Lance and the champion, are going to be so bad that we're going to need to gain a ton of levels here. So I decided to just grind against Lorelei until I could get enough levels to get through. And let's see how long it takes. Right now, we're sitting at about 5 hours and 51 minutes. So what time were we finally able to beat her? But what the heck, let's just go back now. Let's do some more, some more grinding attempts here. And it gets me thinking one thing. We can always relearn Mega Drain. What if I give Exeggutor Solar Beam in the place of Mega Drain? Will it just one-shot something now? Okay. Here, I kind of want to... I want to get the sleep on this, um... Dugong. Oh, that's a one-hitter. Yes. That's precisely what I was going for. So, here... 
Now Doris goes Thunder. That's an easy one hitter. Nice. Thunderbolts. There's about half here. Weezing can use Sludge. Nice. Easy win there. A knocks out Jinx. Haunter out first. Come on. Wait just a second. Can we explode? Yes! Oh, we beat Lorelei. <laughs> oh, we finally got through. The Lorelei fight ultimately took 50 minutes of grinding at four times speed in order to level up enough to get through the fight. But we got it done, and now we get to move on to Bruno. And Bruno is typically not very hard, but let's find out if we can actually get through him on the first attempt. So here, rock slide is what it is. We're just gonna go solar beam here. Nice, easy win right there. Now Hitmonchan uses Thunder Punch. Haha, <laughs> wrong punch, buddy. So that's a one hitter. Now on Hitmon Lee is where we go. Explosion, and we one shot it. Nice. So now we're going to send Cloyster out for this Onyx, so we can just surf it down. Nice. Blizzard misses. We get hit with Submission. Oh, now we froze it. <laughs> oh my god, two Pokemon took down Bruno. That was easy. Bruno, you absolute legend. <laughs> Just getting wrecked out here in the streets. So of course Bruno was not difficult, but he's never difficult in runs, so we'll just count that one as an automatic victory anyway. But the next one is Agatha, and she could be an absolute troll, swapping out Pokemon, confusing us. This could be hard. Lick can't affect us, you know. So, yeah. Okay, we're just gonna explode here. And we're gonna send out Doris here. He goes thunder on this one. Thunderbolts, Thunder Wave. Now we just have to blow up. Nothing to do there. Sludge, Thunderbolts. Okay, we take down the first Gengar. Flamethrower here. Now we just have to blow up. We have no choice. Blizzard, nice, does knock that one out. Hey, okay, we knocked that one out. We're to the final Gengar, we just have to blow up here. We have no choice. Okay, but here now, Psychic. But we survive. 
an earthquake one shots. Oh my god, we got to Agatha on the first attempt. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my god, we just beat Agatha on the first attempt. That's stupid, stupid. So as Agatha goes down, you can probably hear in the live commentary just how exhausted I am at this point. We're 6 hours and 48 minutes into this run, but I'm so excited that we finally made it to Lance, and I'm just hoping that we can get through him on the first attempt. Maybe we just sweep from here. Maybe we don't even have to use the rare candies that are in the bag. That would be pretty ridiculous, but it is possible. So let's get into our first fight against Lance and find out. Um, Thunderbolts is not enough to guarantee the one hit there. That is stupid, stupid. Okay, here, Thunderbolt will finish that one off, though. We outspeed on the Dragonair, so I'm going to put it to sleep. It wakes up immediately, rip. Okay, we're getting beaten by this next uh, Dragonair here. But I think this is okay because we're going Ice Beam here. Oh, it's not a one-hitter. Oh, and it's so close to... Okay, so now we have to do that. And now we have to survive against Aerodactyls. Not too bad to do that. So Blizzard finishes that one off. And here he thunders me. Any blizzards there. Okay, we need better luck than that, <laughs> clearly. Um, we just got bad luck there. For him to use fly, he's perfectly randomizing there. Thunder wave, he goes hyper beam. We get a hit there while he recharges. This is again a spot for wheezing, I think. Nice. We survive the. Whatchamacall? Bubble beam. Oh, and we just destroyed that one. Yes. Yes. That gives us even more Pokemon going into the later parts of the team. So. He hyper beams. We hit rock slide. We can go explosion. Yes. We take down Aerodactyl. We still have three Pokemon this time, two of which know a sleep move. Blizzard. And there we go, we took down Lance, yes! Oh my god, we got him to sleep. Explosion took him to half health, and then we were able to complete that section by, uh, you know, just uh, getting the ice beam from Cloyster. Oh my god. This has been a grind, but we are there at the champion we still have 12 rare candies so we can decide what strat we want to use but i think this is a spot where we lead off with i say executor because we're going to cheese his ai a little bit his um sand slash only wants to use poison sting against uh an executor
Oh my god. It's time. <laughs> this has been such a grind. Okay. So I'm going to start off with Solar Beam here. We don't even care about the poison sting. We don't care about being poisoned. That doesn't matter. What matters is that we're going to blow up on this Alakazam here because it's not going to kill my Exeggutor. So Exeggutor has taken out two Pokemon on its own. Perfect. Perfect. Now we need to decide how to continue. Cloyster is the only one that has a good, super effective move here. So I'm going Blizzard at about half. Ice Beam there. Okay. So we don't quite get Exeggutor down. We're going to have to self-destruct. Okay. That's fine. We still got four Pokemon to take out three. Um. So let's see. He's going to put out Cloyster next, I believe. He does. So here, Doris... Thunder is not quite enough to one shot here, but we do two shots, so that's fine. Okay. Here, I'm going to Thunder Wave on Ninetales just to uh, make sure that it's slower. You know, that could be important at some point. We're going to self destruct here just to finish it off. Um. And now I'm going Graveler. Rock Slide is super effective. It works. We're all the way to the final Jolteon. And its only move that's neutrally effective is Pin Missile. So that's all it's going to do. And the Earthquake ends it. Oh my god, at seven hours. Basically seven hours on the dot. <laughs> 659, 29, and 51 seconds. So, literally 30 seconds away from seven hours on this one. But we beat the game and we, we never exceeded the level cap. Our, our strongest Pokemon were like, you know, slightly over level 50 at the end. Um, but with only one PP in every single move, an explosion move every single time. I mean, Weezing's only at level 44, 47. 44, uh, 51, okay, Cloyster got kind of high, same for Graveler, but our highest level Pokemon was 51. <laughs> you finally got at least 50 species. Oh my god. Oh my god, guys. That was brutal. <laughs> but, hey, the channel blew up. We blew up. This was, this was what it had to be. So, uh... Anyway, I'm going to edit this. I'm going to get it up on the channel and I hope you guys enjoy it. So let me just give a really heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you who have watched the videos, who have subscribed recently, people who have been here for a long time and people who are brand new. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. We're already about a third of the way to 4K subs. So if you want to suggest a challenge for the 4K subs special, Drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. We'll just see if we can keep running this up. I'm just having a great time making videos. I hope you guys are having a great time watching them. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to the channel members. I'll see you in the next video. Later.